Need to incorporate a new business? Go to ea4y.com. Need low-cost bookkeeping services? Go to ea4y.com. Need taxes prepared at a really low cost? Go to ea4y.com. We provide all our services online so you don't have to leave your couch. Just go to ea4y.com. That is ea, the number four, y.com. So where do you have to go? That's right, ea4y.com. following is a presentation of the High Spot Podcast. Making their way to the ring. Talking about the world of professional wrestling. The team of Jeff Martin and the trendsetter, Brian Perga. The Jersey Wrecking Crew. People have spoken. The People's Podcast. The HSP unofficial WWE podcast. Jeff. Well, it's a oh, it nice intro for a change there. What's going on, guys? This is the HSP SmackDown review. I am Jeff Martin alongside the trendsetter Brian Berga. We are back here for another SmackDown review. Follow us on all our social media at High Spot Podcast. If you guys really love the show, then Dan- follow us on Twitter and Instagram right now. Uh, did I, what, 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 Damn it! That's, no. that's very offensive. Well, we're trying to keep it PG. Well, WWE programming. Well, it is it is PG. But what's going on, man? Trendsetter. Uh, lots to talk about here today on the show. Uh, two things though before we start that I've noticed, and um, I, I got to get it off right, off my chest uh, right now. And that is, dude, this coronavirus is going to be here for a damn long time. Well, it's what you and I have talked about during the High Spot podcast that we do. Uh, guys, definitely take a listen to it. You'll you really like it. Uh, this is the new normal. This will oh be the normal. God. Everywhere you go, you're going to be wearing a mask. It's going to be you're going to be practicing social distancing. You know, looking forward but, now. But some people aren't next even year. practicing that. No, some people aren't even practicing that. But this is the new normal, man. It's it's not going away anytime soon. And uh, yeah, it's it's here to stay forever. Not necessarily the virus. If there's a vaccine, there'll be a vaccine. But the whole precautionary thing now of people just being more health conscious in a way. Yeah, it, see, I don't, I, didn't, I don't even think that, though, because there's people that are living their lives right now and not even practicing what, what we're talking about here. Yeah. You know, there's people that are living life and they're like, to hell with this coronavirus. And I'm going to go out. I'm going to go drink. I'm going to not put on a mask on. I'm going to, you know, do everything that I've been doing before that and, you know, the heck with everything else that's going on, which is one way to live life. That's fine. And that's why Florida is seeing this crazy increase in the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, now there's actually they're actually letting some kind of fans into the performance center to watch uh, SmackDown Raw and NXT, which I, you know, I find peculiar. Plus, now they had a whole uh, someone tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, and so they shut down the tapings now for WWE uh, for the moment. So what you saw this week was pre-taped, and of course we're going to get into everything. And and then the other thing, Trendsetter, that I was surprised, I was off social media a little bit uh, yesterday. Such a liar. And you can't go five minutes without well, going on social media. for those five minutes, and I look, and all of a sudden I'm like, what the F, man? I'm like... Like what is going on with this whole with the whole movement now where everyone's talking about what these wrestlers are doing and you know it's it's just a bad situation on all ends man because you have you have these wrestlers being accused of doing stuff like this you have these these uh, the females here being uh you know uh being treated badly and you know you have to believe them and until someone's proven you know get guilty you're going to say they're innocent who do you believe you know you're torn between the lines and it's just a crazy time right now in this in this whole situation you got the pandemic you got black lives matter you've got women speaking out on uh, on and accusing wrestlers of, of of horrible conduct and we don't condone it whatsoever but what a crazy time man we we cannot ignore uh, what is going on in the wrestling world right now? 
We can't. It seems to be a, a situation, Jeff, where like everybody is now speaking out on a lot of things that they've been holding back for so long, and now it's really it comes in the situation too where you know things have happened what you know five, ten years ago are now being brought up to the surface, and it just draws a gigantic question mark now of what necessarily you know we you talked about a certain type of normalcy we want, right? Well, you know when things start opening up where the public can actually go to these wrestling events, and we're not just talking now strictly about WWE, the independent scene. You know how is it going to be now? Like how how are promoters now going to be able to conduct things right now? Because these things have happened, and now everybody's trying to point a finger, saying well, who's really responsible for this. And now it's going to be a whole new game when things go back to a sense of normalcy, too. And, and it's crazy, too, when you hear these stories come up, and you're like, well, you know, why wasn't it talked about? Well, maybe back then it wasn't necessarily the most popular thing to discuss, or, or the individual was not uh, comfortable uh, talking about it. But now we're in a day and age, man, where people, you know, they're just, they're just coming out. And especially with a powerful tool like social media, they're definitely going to get their message across a lot faster with a lot of other people listening and talking about it, like we're talking right now. Yeah, we're going to see what happens to all these accusations and a little bit of tongue-tied uh, in the beginning I was just because, like, it's just all shocking, man, absorbing all this information and, you know, seeing these wrestlers in a new light after all these accusations that uh, they've, you know, that, that you've seen uh, on the uh, on the internet this past a few days and uh, really tough to have that sink in already WWE has released Jack Gallagher and of course it's vital because in what we're talking today when we're reviewing Smackdown because one of the people at the center of this is Matt Riddle and leading up to the show it was going to be his debut we talked about last week how look let's put out the accusations let's put the accusations aside for one second on um, talking about Matt Riddle, the wrestler, it was very important for him to come into WWE, into SmackDown, with some kind of push. Mm-hmm. With something where, like, you know what, this guy's got to come off the bat, and he's got to make an, uh, an impact right away, right? So we were talking about the different scenarios that he could come in, whether it's just going to be a squash match. But no, he gets put into a major, major uh, rivalry off the bat when he comes in here, which is good. But then part of your thinking... Uh, I can't get that stuff that I heard, all the accusations out of my mind. So WWE is caught between a rock and a hard place here heading into this uh, episode of SmackDown. So when you heard these accusations on Matt Riddle, what were the first things that you thought about? Uh, first thing that came to my mind was, was well, there goes his push, basically. Yeah, the, 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 you know, WWE, uh, for the most part, sometimes, depending on the situation, this, this is where I think it differs now with Matt Riddle in the current situation we're in right now. That before, if this was, let's say, normal, you know, things were back to normal, you have an audience out there and it's just an, a normal day in the life of SmackDown, then maybe his debut gets pushed back or maybe the, the, the debut does not occur because now they just don't want to put him on television because of the mere fact that they want these allegations to be taken care of before anything because they don't want to be promoting if these allegations were to be proven yeah. true. Yeah. But since it was a taped environment, his debut is already there. It's not something you can necessarily edit out of the show. So they're, they were going to put it out there anyway. Now, do we see Matt Riddle again after this? Who knows? Jeff just mentioned, too, the tapings have been canceled. You know, we don't know how long that's going to last. Will it affect next week? We don't know, or, or maybe not next week, because I'm, I'm sure these are taped uh, way in advance now. As but, of right uh, now, we don't know what's going on as far as, like, you know, you need to be quarantined for at least a couple weeks when you have someone, you know, test positive, they evacuate the performance center. So as of now, we don't know. So there might be news that breaks so we after don't this. Know. Yeah, so right now we're at a you know wait-and-see standpoint. But but I uh, think what WWE's done right now is they've kind of showcased Matt Rural now on television. So what's going to happen is now you have no choice, in my opinion, for the WWE, you have no choice but to continually showcase them until we find out what the outcome is of these allegations. And once we finish the review here, we'll add our two cents on whether it was the right idea or if something else could have been done. But right now, WWE, when we first heard about this in the afternoon, we were thinking, oh, no way they're going to put Riddle on here. But to see that he was a vital part of this uh, episode here, it was pretty kind of tough not to include him. But we'll get to our opinions after the show exactly what WWE could have done differently. But let's go into the show here. They show highlights of the uh, finals between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles last week. Instant we, classic, in, as they call you it. You know, and I saw it again in the highlights. Man, it, you know, if you look at the highlights, it was a, again. You, it just reinstates that it was so tremendous the matchup that they had last week. Well, I mean, that's what highlights yeah. do. It, it, well, it showcases the best. Oh, parts I didn't of know it. that. Thanks Watching for pointing the that whole out. thing. Well, you're welcome, Jeff. You know, finally, yeah, hey, let's pick up the pace here. You know, let's, <laughs> I'm let's, only like let's, 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 let's speed only up like forty here. years late on highlights. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and Jeff's so worried about the cartridge days. We have to put them together by cutting tape oh, physically man. and taping it together. But no, we're in the day and age, Jeff, where technology. 
makes those things look a lot better than they do. But again, th- no, it's but not this the is case good. I mean, this in is the good, situation. Yeah. It was an amazing match. When you condense it like that, it makes it even more impactful. Start off with a celebration. Now, I'm not one Jeff Nestor uh, for these ceremonies. Do you think there's too many goddamn celebrations? I think there are too many celebrations. I think it's too many of these ceremony things. But you know what? For a guy like AJ Styles, bravo. He deserves yeah. it. You know, Because yeah. like, he's told, earned yeah. it. Yeah. He's earned that, that notoriety that he's gotten now, you know, AJ Styles, he's a proud man. He, he's not going to want those accolades in real life. But you know what? When it's when it's bestowed upon him, it really, for me, highlights the fact that I look at AJ Styles more as a symbol as a guy that, you know, this is a guy that all the fans wanted, all the fans were behind, and finally he was given the opportunities that he rightfully earned, in my opinion. Because, you know, you mentioned the story last week where, you know, the Vince McMahon was like, you know, well, we have a lot of guys that, that do what you do, what makes it different. And, and, and AJ went with that mentality. I'm going to be the biggest fighter. I'm going to be that pit bull that's going to fight every single time and he showcased that he drew that attraction from the audience the audience was invested in him so it's a natural progression now where he is right now he is the intercontinental champion a well-fought match last week and at the same time the only the one of the titles he has not earned and uh, had gotten he finally has it now too and and you spoke about it before and we've we've heard it millions of times before jeff you know can we bring prestige can we bring relevancy back to the intercontinental championship who knows? I- I'm taking baby steps. Yeah, I'll it was a good start. It was a good start. It was a good start. It was. A, I, I want to say damn so much today. It was a really good start. Go ahead, save. Uh, it was a really good start, man. I, I can't emphasize. So you got Daniel Bryan there. You got a bunch of the wrestlers outside, and he's. I've had get... enough of Daniel Bryan. <laughs> I don't want to hear him talk about. Are you defending this guy? This guy? This guy? You were fickle, Daniel. You were just as fickle as everybody else. You didn't want to defend the WWE Championship when you had the opportunity to. So stop talking, Daniel. You're such a freaking hypocrite. So, are you done? Are you good? Did you I got it off your chest? Good. Yes. So and I didn't curse, unlike you. No, exactly. P- kudos to you on that. Um, so, kudos. So, so, so Renee Young is there to present him with the IC title. And, of course, AJ Styles is going to decide to be the kind of guy that's going to res- wrestle, uh, f- you know, defend that title on occasion. Only the normal contenders are going to get the opportunity. It's not wrong. Who said it? Who said it? I didn't, I'm say, not saying you, I didn't say you did. Yeah, I'm but, just saying why is that wrong in the terms of people like, oh, he's not going to defend it like, uh, like the well, US to, Open Challenge. He's going to face the number one contender each single time who's the number one contender for that title. That's the right way to do it in my mind. That's the way it's been done. Oh, so before. so the guy that you love so much, like Bret Hart, who's a fighting champion, you don't like the, the way he used to do that. Well, hey, he did it in his own accord, but he always faced the number one contender. Hey, he gave opportunities when he wanted to, but he didn't go up promoting that, I'm going to give this person an opportunity because, you know, he deserves it. And he does no, 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 Not everybody deserves everything, Jeff. You know, I'm not well, going to give the guy in the I back mean, and I mean, if you go back, I don't know. Go, shot, if you right? want to go back to, you know, when he was the fighting champion, and I think he took on all comers. So. He took on all comers, Jeff. He didn't promote it like Daniel Bryan does it. A huge difference. And don't you dare on this <laughs> podcast talk about – Daniel Bryan and Bret Hart in the same sentence, all right? Blasphemy to you. Shame on you. I At least I had a little respect for you at that point when you mentioned greats like Shawn Michaels. Well, I don't know. I don't, well, uh, you throw uh, Daniel you know Bryan what, in I'll, there, that is are you, blasphemy. Okay, wow, wow. Uh, really, you, you wouldn't put him in that category? No. Wow, okay. All right, maybe. I mean, uh, if that's your opinion, that's fine. But I'm sure we're going to – I mean, I, I rate him up there. He's definitely – in the rest in, in W right now, he's definitely a top ten guy. If you if you let him be and you don't you know you know mess with him or you let the machine you know screw I would with what he's with you doing, then if unfortunately he didn't deal with all the injuries, if yeah. the injuries kind of set back a little bit of that. What could have been, you know, when he won the title at WrestleMania 31, there was 30. that opportunity. Oh, the Intercontinental title or the yeah, the Intercontinental yeah. title. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that has opportunities, but I think a lot of the injuries kind of diminished a little bit of that because again he he was out for so long. And well, the, whatever you feel on Daniel Bryan, right? He actually put the belt around AJ Styles. He, you know, he bit his bit his lips, whatever like that, and did it. Finally, bit his tongue. And uh, you know, so then basically, you know, Daniel Bryan is going to be in the back of the line for the IC title, which, in all aspects, is true. He's got to work his way back up to uh, title contention. He had his opportunity, so he's got to go to the back. And there's a lot of people outside the ring who are worthy. Cesaro was there. Even Shorty G is there. Drew Gulak, who's got the win over AJ Styles, he should get an opportunity. I would love to see them split up the Usos and have and find out who's Marty and who's Sean. And let's see them go. I think one of them could be a great singles competitor. Big E is is there. I'm telling you, man, like I love the New Day, and I know WWE loves the New Day as far as merch and all the tag team history that they have accomplished. But you know what? It's time to split them up. 
I mean, we'll get to that sometime down the road, but it's time to split these guys up. Big E is a is a world title champion in the making, if not this year, next year, and a heel Big E would be just awesome in my mind. So a lot of stuff there. So then, you know, you know, they're arguing, and then all of a sudden we see the debut of Matt Riddle. And Matt Riddle comes in, and man, what an instant push. Him and AJ Styles. And then, of course, AJ Styles and Matt Riddle you know, face off. And then what looks to be an Intercontinental title match is not because AJ Styles doesn't feel like defending it and putting up the title. So we get a non-title match. And then, I got to be honest with you, man, did Matt Riddle finally show you what he's all about. I mean, I don't care what the booking was in NXT. It was kind of so-so, but what a way to showcase Matt Riddle against AJ Styles. And, man, you know how, like, the matches fit like a glove, and these guys, you know, it's just like it's just like a, a, a great piece of art? That's what this was. It was a great piece of art between these two guys. Yeah, well, you're a piece of something, Jeff, hey, but I won't, hey, get to, hey, I won't get to that point right hey, now as well, we're talking about the on title. Yeah, here. exactly. Uh, but you know what? You're talking about Matt Riddle and how he, you know, AJ didn't want to defend the title and didn't want to give him the opportunity. What has Matt Riddle proven, Jeff, in, in WWE? Yeah, wow. he had a great career in NXT. I know NXT. you love AJ, dude, he did but good. I'm not saying anything oh, wrong about Oh, my goodness. AJ There's Styles. nothing to do with that AJ Styles, but, but you just want to give title matches to anybody. Hey, hey, the guy from catering walking the door. Hey, let's give him an air kind of title match, huh? Oh, uh, the guy who, who cleans up and throws out the garbage in the back of the front center. Let's give him an IC title match. No, Jeff. Matt Rowe came in to debut. Hey, and no better person to impact yourself. If you want to make an impact right away, go face a top guy on SmackDown. AJ Styles. He is well, one of the top were you guys impressed on SmackDown. With the match? It doesn't surprise me, you know why? Because with two guys who've never worked together. That I recall. I did I've, you know, yeah. did really good. Yeah, I don't recall them ever working together on the independents either. But you know, you know, chemistry is hard to find nowadays, you know, and this time of day, Jeff, you pay for it if you could. You know, those two have chemistry. And it's also showcased that Matt Riddle can face a top guy like AJ and, and hold his own. So it, it definitely helped a lot of Matt Riddle in terms of, you know, all the talk about him in NXT. Did you like him in NXT? I liked him in NXT. Did you but, like the way he was? He but he was, was he was always his own worst enemy because some of the stuff he said. Now I yeah. admire him for speaking his mind and not backing down, but rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And we all know in any type of business, right? It's all politics. And so as soon as you rub people the wrong way, or people are not, you know, don't like you because you're saying something that's harsh and they don't want, you know, to deal with the whole social media backlash from it. You know, I don't want to work with that guy. I don't want to work with this. So you kind of limit your own opportunities. But that, despite that being said. There's never been a question for me, Jeff. I can't, you know, I'll ask you the same thing. There's never been a, been a question to me. Can Matt Riddle go in the ring? Listen, in the independent scene, he was outstanding. And then he gets in that WWE uh, light, and then you kind of forget what he was. And then you see him against AJ, and they let them be. And you're like, oh, my God, that's right. Matt Riddle is this good. Yeah. Because I will not lie to you. I do not like the way that they had put Matt Riddle's situation in NXT. Uh, he had gotten in trouble. He had voiced a lot of, uh, you know, displeasures with Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, made them public, and maybe he got punished for it. But I did not like the way he was presented on NXT whatsoever in any way. I don't, I don't like the whole Broser weights. I was like, I was like, you know, it, it was, it was fun, but it wasn't really Matt Riddle. And then you put him against AJ Styles, and again to get the win over AJ Styles to beat him one, two, three. Yeah. Right in the middle of the ring. What did we talk about yes, uh, last week? AJ Styles doesn't lose like that. Vince protects him, and for him to get a, a victory like that uh, again just shows you that they are really high on Matt Riddle. And, and also the prestige of AJ, because when you, like we mentioned before, you get a, mm-hmm. a win over a guy like him. You, I wouldn't say you're instantly made, but now you're looked at now as a top contender because you could go toe to toe with somebody like him. Same thing happened with Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak only benefited yeah. for the mere fact that you know Daniel Bryan mentioned, "Hey, why don't you defend against him?" That would have been a great match. Yes, no question and, about and we'll it. it Does Drew Gulak yeah. deserve it? You know he's getting the title shot now, so yes, he he's, he's earned that opportunity. And now with with Matt Riddle, like wow, now it seems like we're seeing the talent. You know, really progress itself, and and a guy like AJ and even as a champion doesn't need that win. It means more to a guy well, like. What Matt about Riddle. what would you say to the person who's going to write on the review this week saying how does AJ Styles win the, win the IC title again in a classic match against Daniel Bryan and loses the next week to Matt Riddle clean one two three? What would you say to that person who's going to take that point of view and 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 use that to be like, oh, there's the IC title again. There you go. Well, what I would say to that person is, was the title on the line. No. no. How many great Intercontinental champions have lost? Singles matches. And they do it all the time. The title wasn't on the line. Yeah, they do it all the time here. So, you know, poo-poo that. (laughs) 
poo poo that as well. Poo poo that idea because it makes no sense to me. And again, I get it. People want to take it from a le- from a legitimate standpoint. You can't have the champion lose, but again, it's happened time time again. It doesn't hurt the individual. It doesn't hurt the prestige of the title. And at the same time, title wasn't aligned. So if this was different, an icy title match it might be it might be the other way around. I might agree in the sense of that too. But you know, to me, great debut by Matt Riddle. Looks like there might be something between him and, and and King Corbin. That's down the road. Who knows? But in the terms of that segment, I thought it was successful. You know, it showcased AJ Styles as the man that he is. It, it also showcased the fact that it might not be done yet with Daniel Bryan. But now you're adding new but elements. But you're putting a lot of people in that mix. more which elements is good, into it, which, which is, is fun you and know, exciting. You, and, you know, as much as people may not want to see it, you can see a fatal four-way down the road as well. For the I Aston hope title. not. You know, I but, hope they but, really kind of keep it separate in a way. Because how many times do we see triple threat matches yeah. in fatal four-ways? Come on. Let's not put all, all our eggs in one basket. But though, I good, don't like eggs. But a good start from Matt Riddle. A hard-hitting match, which you'd love to see. And one more thing, too, and those kicks, they look so real, right? I mean, they are I, real. I mean, I mean, they look... I felt them. Yeah, I mean, they look so good. It was so well done, man. It was just... It was an eye-opener because to those people that poo-poo the whole fact about AJ Styles losing, go back and look at that match. Matt Riddle deserved to be in that ring with AJ Styles. He did. Right? And, and boy, AJ Styles is just such a valuable piece. To I never th- said he didn't deserve to be in the ring, though. I said he didn't deserve an IC title. No, no, no. But, but I'm just saying for those people that are going to yeah. say, hey, how, is, how does AJ Styles lose in his first uh, matchup after winning the uh, the IC title? Matt Riddle deserves to be there. He deserves in, to be in that category. But you forgot because NXT did such a poor job in in showcasing Matt Riddle. That's that's they, they didn't put him in any meaningful feuds. I mean, him and Killian Dane, and and you know, I mean, for, for for Pete's sake, you know, let's 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 respect the man here. And again, we're talking about the wrestling side of Matt Riddle. We'll talk about Matt Riddle's future after uh, we end with this review. So then Jeff Hardy's got an interview, a one on one, and he talks about Sheamus and him being a bully. And then again, he admits to, of course, being an addict and an alcoholic, and and you know, basically, just again, we're hearing that story of of the redemption of Jeff Hardy. I'm surprised that he lost to Sheamus at Backlash. I really did. I mean, they decided to give the win to Sheamus. The the rivalry continues. Sheamus then went on to say that he's a bully, and then he's going to have a toast for uh, Jeff Hardy next week uh, on SmackDown. You know, very, very well done by Jeff Hardy. You can tell he's remorseful. You can tell that this is bothering him. You can tell that uh, he's doing a good job here portraying... Um, Someone that is seeking redemption. Are you surprised, though, that Sheamus got the win at Backlash uh, this past Sunday? Uh, yes, but it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Uh, just for the mere fact that it, it proves or it's showcasing now that they're not going to make this just a one and done type of thing. They're going to continue this storyline. Now, you know, you run the risk, not, not necessarily in this case right now, but depending on how long you want it to go, you run the risk of it kind of just showcasing and getting kind of stale. But in terms, of it's it's very personal. They're they're really, like you said, emphasizing this whole redemption story with Jeff Hardy, of really basically talking about his past. And and you know, in in all honesty, this really could be Jeff Hardy's, or at least I like to feel Jeff Hardy's last go with the WWE. Uh, I don't know if that ends in a title win of, of some sort of a, of a championship, but right now this is the main focus that he's putting all his energy for in the sense that he wants whatever people look at in terms of his you know legacy in wrestling. You know, he wants it to be a positive message the way he's trying to portray. And then again with Sheamus, unbelievable skills on the mic. He's improved you know leaps and bounds as the years have gone by, and he's proven himself yeah, to he's be done a really good job. He's got on the microphone to portray that ability. You want to hate him. He now is uh, his embracing the bull side, which before you couldn't do it because they're they're all for the anti-bullying he's campaign. He's probably a top. He's showcasing that. He's now. probably a top five guy in the mic right now for SmackDown. Yeah, no question about it. And so I really feel happy the fact that this rivalry will continue, though. Now, can it veer a little bit away from the same thing about being an addict and being a junkie? And okay, maybe, hopefully, and it could be more more personal in terms of between the two of them. But in terms of storyline, yes, I was surprised, but. I would like to say it's a pleasant surprise because we're going to see more of Sheamus and Jeff Hardy who have really are really good, good in the ring. There. And, of course, Sheamus will toast Jeff Hardy next week on SmackDown. You got Shorty G versus Mojo Rawley, or if I could say WWE's uh, SmackDown's creative man crush, Mojo. So Mojo's, oh, like Mojo's got – huh? I thought he was Well, Graves yeah, Corey Graves' man crush as well. <laughs> but Corey Graves even at the end pointed that, you know, he keeps coming up short, no – no, I don't think there was a pun intended on Shorty G there, but Shorty G gets the win. Uh, so here's the case. Can Mojo Raleigh step from the shadows of his boy Gronk, Trent Sutter? 
Uh, a simple answer, no, because I think right now, because of that friendship, he is not going to be linked to that for some forsaken reason. I don't know why. How can Mojo he, get back in the game? How, like, how, like, like, why is it that he's on TV now, right? And you know, they're they're really talking him up, hyping him up. He loses in a tag match, and then he comes out, and loses to Shorty G with an inside cradle. You know. It, whether you think it's a lucky win by Shorty G, a win is a win. Shorty G did a great job. Shorty G is very, very underrated. He is, to me, a top athlete, a top performer in the WWE. But how do you get Mojo? How do you get Mojo's mojo going here? You know, if we're talking about Austin Powers here, it's simple. Just go how back do you get to his mojo, 19, man? Just go to back to 1960, and uh, you'll, you'll be fine. But no, I'm dating myself there with Austin Powers. But um, honestly, the way I feel you'd want to approach Mojo Raw is we haven't really he- heard him talk a lot. And so, you know... Do you want to hear him talk? I mean, you've heard well, samples of it, and it's, you know, it's not yes, pretty. Yes, Jeff, we've heard samples of him being talked by, game, by game, being given scripts. And, hey, I applaud him, though, for the mere fact that he's taking those scripts that were utter garbage, in my opinion, and trying to make something out of it. I mean, what are you going to do? Say no in his situation? He doesn't have that power or prestige where he could say no and it not affect him down the road where then they eventually don't give him anything. At this point, he has something to do, so might as well take advantage of it. I'm on TV as opposed to back in catering. I love using that that phrase, but I heard Caden's really good back there. Um, so I, I'd want to hear Mojo. You know, when Mojo's has done interview, when Mojo has done interviews before, and he's had the opportunity to talk, uh, he's a pretty entertaining guy. So give him that opportunity and have him kind of develop who he wants to be. Right now, he's pretty much a generic guy. That's right now, he's basic to me, and simple. To me, I'm doing a creative here. To me, he's a, a, a tag team guy. Okay, what do you think? That's where he shined more as a tag team guy. But if you want to give him an opportunity as a singles, then you got to give him the ability to talk. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta have to give him the ability to showcase his personality because if he only just speaks very minutely and then goes out there and, and, and he shows athleticism, he shows he can go in the ring, um, but then loses. I'm like, perception is reality here. You're going to perceive the fact that, oh, this guy is being hyped up by other people rather than himself hyping himself up. And he's losing to guys like Shory G, which is nothing wrong with losing to a guy like Chad Gable. But the mere fact that when you're trying to push this guy as somebody that people need to pay attention to and you're having him lose to other individuals, then you're kind of like, well, what's the point then? Is he just a, a really big jobber guy? I have no idea. Or yeah. enhancement guy, as they call it now. Um, Ms. TV with John Morrison. Oh, boy. Sonya Deville with Mandy Rose face-to-face. Um and this is where I, I got to talk to you about. I mean, they had Mandy Rose on there. Sonya came in. And you know what? As much credit as I've actually given to Sonya Deville, because you've been really on the case of, wow, Sonya, oh, look, I love it. Look, look, what she's, look, what, look how good she's doing. Yeah. I think she took a step back. Really? Yes, because Mandy, you know, Mandy's not grand on the microphone, and, and she's at a certain point in her character. That she has to talk a certain way. But with Sonya Deville, it just seems like, okay, you've beaten Mandy already. You've beaten her twice in, in a tag team. Why are you so obsessed with her now? Let's move on. You're better than it. And the way Sonya delivered it, it kind of had me kind of giggle. <laughs> and like, she's like having a panic attack. Yeah. And it wasn't as good as her first promo she did on Mandy. You know, she tried to be, she tried to be, uh, she tried to be uh, Victoria. Yeah, it kind of felt that way to me, yeah. too. And so it kind of lost. And so in my opinion, she kind of took a step back. I don't know how interested people might be in a Mandy, Sonya Deville. I think early on it was something that you could kind of sink your teeth into. But now with that with that delivery, not saying it's not going to happen. They're probably going to have another singles match with each other. But I think in my honest opinion, Sonya took a step back with that promo. Now, she can make it up next week. And I'm not saying she's done, but I'm saying she took a step back because that promo wasn't really good. All right, so uh... – what bothers me about this segment is that, you know, Miz and Morrison were in the ring. Miz and Morrison, you know, they don't <laughs> just to be relegated back to doing Miz TV, and after that Strowman match, and there's no like, hey, are they going to get a rematch? Hey, you know that absolutely you know, not. You know, the Miz kind of, uh, you know, cost John Morrison a pin there, a pinfall at Backlash when you pull him off Braun Strowman. Nothing like, like it was just. A regular interview, which fine, don't 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 touch. Wow, about that, the right? WWE has never done that before. No, have and, us forget and, what happened, let alone a week ago. And then listen, I can't complain about anything Mandy does. Uh, you oh, know. Mandy! Oh, Mandy! Uh, so she comes in there. Uh, well, one she, thing you can complain about Mandy is she's she, a Lotus. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing you can complain. And about. she's um, it's very beautiful. <laughs> and actually, was really see. I'm starstruck right now. I'm awestruck. But she she did good on the mic. I think she, she did. I think she had a good rebuttals to what Sonya Deville. I'm not was saying she about. did, but she has to talk a certain way. And Sonya Deville, to me, I think, um, 
I think that everything was okay except the delivery. I'm still high on her. Um, I just think that she could have used more of like, I don't want to be second fiddle to Otis, you know. But the fact that like she's getting opportunities because Manny's beautiful and all that stuff is, I don't, I don't mind them having separate feuds because that's what you have to have in the women's division. But uh, I'm not as eh as you were on it. Uh, I still, Sonya, I still think Sonya Deville is going to be. Uh, so let's be perfectly wrestling. honest here, Jeff. That promo, that delivery, the all-around promo of what it was it trying doesn't, to portray. It doesn't help when thumbs the Thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, is that my only option? Those are your only two thumbs options. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. It was but, a thumbs down. But, it, but it's just, just by being honest with it, it doesn't mean you take anything the, away from Sonya. It, just, it the, wasn't a great delivery of the promo. But it, but it, it wasn't a d- good delivery, but also you got the Miz and Morris in there giggling like schoolboys because you know it's going to turn into a cat fight. It doesn't really help the whole situation when they're talking about it because you don't take it seriously. And then when they're rolling on the ground and you see Miz and Morris and going, oh, yeah, I wanna, like two giddy schoolboys looking at two girls fighting, it really doesn't help the situation. And then, of course, uh, they you know they brawl, and then soon develop me to the outside. The Miz won't let Mandy Rose through, and then it gets you know slapped in the face. That was a uh, heavy that was, slap. That was like man, wow. that 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 was like nail cutting. Uh, she she didn't hold back on that one. Though. No, no, and you could tell like he was. Luckily, he didn't get cut because that looked like a heavy handed slap. Right, yeah, he was asking Morrison towards him. Am I cut on the cheek? Because his cheek was really yeah, right after and that. He, look, he took it. He took it great, man. Like I don't know how it was in the back afterwards. Well, he's married to Maurice, so I'm sure he's used to being slapped <laughs> in the face a couple wow, times. Wow! 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 Uh, you know something I don't, but no, I Maurice mean, is really good at doing that. Yeah, no, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I will give it a thumbs down, but I really am not gonna put the sole blame on on Sonya Deville. But I get what you're talking about with the delivery from Sonya. She's had a, she's had a better promos. I, I'll just say this: she's Listen. had she's had better promos, but it's not gonna be make or break. We just wonder where this rivalry is gonna go. But then again, though, like you're happy that WWE is giving the females other pro uh, other other rivalries, and it's not just about the women's championship, especially when we know that that. SmackDown Women's Championship is not going to be defended because they are focused. Their tunnel vision is going to be solely on the breakup of the women's tag team champions in Sasha Banks and Bayley. And that's where we head to off next. The New Day takes on the Lucha House Party. You got Big E with Kofi taking on, again, the Lucha House Party. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bayley are there doing commentary. And I give, as much as I don't want to... Bailey is so freaking annoying that she's doing her job as a heel well, and they're doing commentary. They're you know dissing the new day, and then after Kofi, uh, after Kofi and Biggie get the win with Biggie with that splash on one of the Lucha House party members, um, Lucha House, Lucha House. Yeah. What did I say, Lucha Party? <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> so, keep going. Yeah. So so after he gets the pinfall. Um, you get Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, who we talked about last week, are just totally disrespected. They're being put into the tag team division, and you know what? They're tired. They're sick and tired of being mistreated, and they, of course, went out there, attacked the New Day, and now they're making a claim that they want those tag team titles, trendsetter. Uh, are you getting so many questions here? Are you getting tired of the New Day as a tag team? Uh, are you happy that you know we've seen maybe Cesaro and Shinsuke maybe put in a tag team for the tag team titles? Uh, just what are your thoughts with this whole situation? Am I tired of the New Day? Uh, yes and no. Uh, they, they're a great <laughs> force and a great team and are very marketable from a business standpoint. So no, I c- can't possibly be tired of them. From what they've done and what they've accomplished, I think they're eight-time tag team champions. I think there's only so much more you can go with it. I think they're holding off because they're waiting for Xavier Woods to come back, which is the missing link of that team. And then we might see uh, what you've talked about before, or maybe the New Day finally split apart. And you can always bring them back together down the road, but maybe they they go their separate ways. Um, And yes, I am tired of them because, you know, for somebody like me who's been so... You know, I've always been enamored by tag team wrestling. And the thing is, what you always want to see is variety. It's a variety show, guys. Yeah. You love seeing different types of tag teams pitted against each other. Sizes, shapes, styles make fights, as they say, right? So, so do tag teams. Different style tag teams make amazing fights, which is why it's so intriguing to see uh, uh, Big E and Kofi now looks like they're going to be pitted up against Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura, who basically had a clean victory over them the week before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if that's the case and that's what gets you tag team title matches, I guess guess that's it and and it works because all four of them work really well together but it just 
it, the frustrates me, similar to the women's division in terms of the titles that get defended, the, t- the tag team titles don't get defended that much anymore. And secondly, we don't have enough variety. How many times are we going to see combinations of, you know, the, the New Day and the Usos? And yeah. then, you know, Shinsuke and Cesaro are new teams, but we've seen, you know, Sheamus and Cesaro as a tag team before face the t- likes of the New Day and the Usos. Now, it's like we need, we need different Shinsuke, variety. Yeah. Now it's Cesaro and Shinsuke. So it's just, it's just to me a scenario where, you know, it's been, it's been said publicly out there and we don't have any validity behind it because I haven't talked to Vince in a really long time but Vince McMahon does not like tag team wrestling anymore like, not like he did back in the 90s when that was the staple of your shows you'd have big shows like SummerSlam Mania Survivor Series you know all, the whole focus was yes you want to see the marquee matches but if you're a fan you're going to be entertained by the likes of the Hart Foundation the Killer Bees, the British Bulldogs, Demolition, the Rockers, Legion of Demolition, Doom. Legion of Doom. The list goes on and on because you had variety there. You know, Money Inc. was a t- team I liked a lot too with Ted DiBiase and IRS. Um, yeah, you, like it. Just for me, I get it. And you know, you want to give credit to Bailey and what she's doing with the character. I give credit to Michael Cole and Corey Graves for man. Dealing with that because <laughs> it was noisy. Sasha and Bailey, I don't know, they were in a world of their own talking while Michael Cole and Corey Graves are trying to do their job. Yeah, and sometimes, I like, mean, that little gnat in front of you trying to swipe it off. Job, it was that good, difficult. Good job by them because but Bailey being did a good job. Good they, job. They, they, being, they, they served their purpose. They're, they're, doing their, they're doing their job as top heels. And so then, after all of that, after the carnage that Shames and Nakamura left in the ring, then you get Nikki Cross, a very angry Nikki Cross. Whoa, she was like, woman hear me roar attacks Bailey and Sasha and then she wants a match well you know she wants a match she wants to fight and then of course I got distracted because Alexa Bliss came down to the ring to break it up and good lord Alexa Bliss in black just like whatever that was like leather or whatever that was oh lord I mean I kind of Trent said you have to talk because I was I was just basically didn't pay attention after that well, basically what ended up happening is Nikki <laughs> oh, she had wanted a but... fight. And Bailey, being the defending and stand-up friend she was, of instead course. of taking the opportunity of fighting Nikki Cross herself, volunteers her best friend in the whole world, Sasha Banks, to Sasha's dismay. What, what are you recommending <laughs> me? Okay, well, you're my best friend, so you know what's good for me. You know, a <laughs> rivalry that should have happened yeah. two years in the past. That ends up happening. We have a really good match between Nikki Cross and Sasha Banks. I was really happy on this, not for the fact that we can see Sasha, because Sasha is really good in the ring, and, and she's always had talent in the ring, and she's had talent match. on the microphone. It was a good match. Had a really good match against Nikki Cross, who really hasn't been able to showcase herself as a singles type of competitor. And really, you know, the two did really well together. Now, like, of course, this is building up the rivalry now, where you know we want the former champions who had their opportunity at Backlash. Granted, it wasn't a, a one-on-one tag team match, but they had the opportunity at Backlash to regain their titles. Didn't happen. So now, for example, and now this is a SmackDown review, but on the Raw side, you have the Iconics now calling out the tag team champs. Now you have a scenario where the former champs, you know, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, want a piece of um, Sasha Banks and uh, Bayley. So it, it's... It's giving you the, the idea that we also they had a match on NXT too. Um, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. Yeah. yeah, so now it's giving the 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 tag team titles some some variety now. Where okay, you know, we're all a different storyline. We have a different storyline on SmackDown. Yeah. Now we can have a storyline in NXT because the titles do travel to all three brands. So that's interesting. But again, it always for me it will always be that it'd be different if Bailey and Sasha were just the tag team champions. The mere fact that Bailey is the women's champion and that title's not getting defended. Kind of just, I shake my head like, okay, well, yeah. obviously that takes a back it, seat, but it, it, it opens up weird. that rivalry. It's weird for me to see Bailey be the one to outfox uh, Sasha Banks or kind of get the best of her in this whole thing. It's just weird to see Sasha play the victim. Someone's got to play the victim here, right? Someone's got to be the patsy. It's just weird seeing Sasha be Bailey's patsy. You know, it just, it, to me, Sasha's the one, she's the boss. She's the one that's usually getting the best of people. And just weird that week after week, Bailey's the one that's getting the best out of, Sa- uh, you know, best of Sasha. So Sasha gets the, the victory here. Um, and again, it sets up maybe for a possible other matchup with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross or the Iconics as 
well, too. But those are kind of your three main people that are at the focus of the women's tag team division. And then so we move on to the Firefly Funhouse. Finally, after a long, long time away, uh, Bray Wyatt finally opens up about his loss in Money in the Bank to Braun Strowman. And first and foremost, congratulations to Braun uh, to to uh, Bray Wyatt uh, on you know the birth of his child. So that's that that's good. So we know that's the reason why he was away. He comes back now, and basically Braun Strowman comes out the Braun Express now and wants to close the chapter. He beat Bray Wyatt, but I thought he was going to talk about the Fiend being the next chapter, but it wasn't. It was Bray Wyatt pre the Fiend pre the whole. Um, you know, uh, just pre the fiend, and we get Bray Wyatt, and you hear follow the buzzards. And uh, listen, man, uh, Bray Wyatt is amazing, and that promo made me all hyped up to see uh, uh, Bray Wyatt once again. Bray Wyatt with the follow the buzzards. Well, you know, it's interesting because in the beginning, wasn't it Bray Wyatt himself that said he would never ever see that Bray Wyatt come back ever again? But again, I'm not going to complain. I'm not here complaining, guys, about it. I was so happy and excited to see that because it's something that we weren't expecting. A lot of us, and you're, you, me included, Jeff, and I'm sure a lot of the people were thinking, all right, when Bray finally comes back from having his baby, oh, baby, you know, uh, he was going to come <laughs> back, and now we're going to have, you know, the um, the scenario where it wasn't going to be Bray Wyatt more. It was going to be the Fiend against Braun Strowman, but that's not what we got. We went back in the past a little bit and got Bray Wyatt, what we normally remembered him as. And it's exciting. You know, now more than ever, Jeff, I got to be honest with you, when it first started, I wasn't really into it because I was thinking, you know, the the influence of The Fiend, it was killed by Goldberg. I mean, Vince McMahon, the WWE, really did a good job of killing any any scenario of The Fiend being something so so sinister and, and demonic that, oh my God, now a guy like Bray's got to deal with that. But now he's got to deal with the original Bray Wyatt, the one, the man who created him. So it it, it holds up for an intriguing storyline. It's exciting and a great way to close the show because it left you with that little cliffhanger like, wow, Bray's back. I'm excited back. for and then it, have, man. they have Braun shaking his head like, yes, I want, I, I, like, I want my maker. I want to stop my maker type of thing. It was really good. I really you know, liked to do it. And, 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 and huge. Huge credit. I think, you know, I give the show a thumbs up from the early onset. Middle was kind of like whatever you want to feel. But and a great ending. Great credit to AJ Styles and also huge credit to Bray Wyatt. Man, how talented and how amazing is Bray Wyatt for all the factors of three characters that he plays. Wow. And he does it so well. And it's so flawless, too. Even though it's a taped atmosphere, he goes from uh, the funhouse guy, he can go to the fiend, and automatically in a, in a snap of your fingers, he goes back to Bray Wyatt and, and doing his promo Love the way it. he does it. So Love effortlessly. It. That guy is so talented and so creative. I hope this is better than we expected to be. You know, if you want to put a title on him, fine. But that's a guy right there that you realize you, that we were talking about last week doesn't need a freaking doesn't need title. It. No. Doesn't really need a title. He Sometimes is, I think it hinders him when he has a title. It does. It really does. You know what I mean? Because then you're worried about, oh man, so who's he going to get the win over? Who's going to beat him? Who's going to, you know, you you have conversation, unnecessary conversation, if you if if you ask me, because then you're talking about, oh, well, who's going to beat him? Oh, he shouldn't. This guy shouldn't get the win here. Oh, it's, you know, because. Let's be honest. The Fiend, uh, Bray Wyatt, uh, Firefly Funhouse Bray, or Follow the Buzzards Bray. Either one of those is just tremendous characters. And you know what? I've missed that Bray Wyatt. I think that as much as the Matt Hardy character tried to bring him back and they had him as a team, I think that kind of hurt Bray Wyatt's mystique. You know, So this is – the Bray Wyatt Follow the Buzzards has now this mystique now because we do miss him. Uh, you know, uh, what does they say? Uh, missing somebody makes the heart grow fonder, right? Is that what yes. it is? That's what it is. I did miss something that close to that. Yeah, something like that. Don't call me on that or don't use it for a love poem for Valentine's Day or nothing like that. But I'm, oh, we're way I'm, away from February. I'm, I'm I don't want to think close. about that time because yeah. so, that's a miserable time for me. So in the end, Trendsetter is a really good smackdown. Yes. Um, you know, of course, it, there might be some lags here and there. Uh, we showed you our critiques and but stuff. Jeff, but, Jeff, isn't it what you always want? You want a good beginning. An okay middle and a good ending and a great ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, and 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 this was uh, done very well. And this is the first week that Bruce is Bruce Pritchard is taking care of Raw and SmackDown. I'm going to say it was a it was a thumbs up for SmackDown. 
Um, so you guys can be the judges of Raw and NXT when you go to uh, the WWE's unofficial podcast here where you have all these talented people checking out Raw you know, and NXT. So you can go check out the Raw Review Wrestling Nostalgia Saturday Night Week in Review with uh, such guests as Mary Grader, Ashley Mann, Anthony DeMarco. You've got your AEW Review Jeff with Jeff Johnson. Uh, and you got the NXT review with Zach Smith. So much going on in the world of pro wrestling. And on a final note, Trendsetter, the whole Matt Riddle situation and the whole thing with the wrestlers here that have been accused. It's a, it's a long list. Um, we're at a time and age where you have to be careful what you say, your actions, and what you do. Uh, we don't. We don't here condone any actions of Matt Riddle or anything that's happened with all these other wrestlers. We feel that while people should speak up, there also should be due process in finding out if someone's innocent or guilty. So WWE was in a bind here. They released a statement saying how any accusations of being true will not be tolerated. We already saw Jack Gallagher be uh, uh, terminated as far as fired from the company. There's questions about Jordan Devlin, uh, the former uh, Cruiserweight champion, uh, Travis Banks, so many other wrestlers. Um, and if you're the WWE, you kind of had your hands tied because he was going to be such a huge part of the show, Matt Riddle, that you really couldn't really take him out at that short notice. You couldn't take him out. And, but then you know, speculation also, not speculation, but uh, information came out from the attorney saying that this case particularly was mm-hmm. this individual who's accusing Matt Riddle has been a case that's been going on for two years. Yeah. You know, there have been, you know, accusations, too, of, you know, this individual stalking Matt Riddle. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not trying to defend Matt Riddle and what, you know, the accusations. No. You know, if they are to be it's true, just, we're just sending you don't out tolerate all the info. that. But I think yeah. right now, more than ever, like you said, too, I think that we had so much invested in this to take him out and head to the show and redo it again. They said, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to let it air. And then from there, whatever happens, we'll we'll do what we need to do accordingly, too. But unfortunately, Jeff, nowadays, I'm sure a lot of you guys can, can probably uh, agree on this, too, that most of the days now... Where the old adage goes that you're 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 innocent until proven guilty. And now the old days is you're guilty until you're proven innocent, which is true. I think Debbie's taking it from the approach from a business standpoint where you know we've already made this commitment, we're gonna stick with it until we hear something else. Now for the other for the other individuals, like we just spoke about Jack Gallagher who got let go, got terminated, you know, it's easier for them to cut ties. But when you've had a lot of invested in somebody, it might be making it more difficult. And I'm pretty sure if if the if things are confirmed and things are Pointed out true. I'm pretty sure WWE will do the right thing. They will do the right and, thing, exactly. And, and, and if they're not, they then they will just continue on and, what they're doing before. And, and if so. they don't do the right thing, then we'll definitely be the first ones here on this show to you know to tell that th- what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. So it's in a tough spot and it's a tough situation. So we'll see what happens uh, in the next couple of weeks. But we we here, uh, the transfer myself, do not condone any of these actions. We take them seriously, and you know uh, it's tough to speak up, man. It really is. And we if you know, we give credit to those that speak up and, and you know, who just will just tolerate it no more. So It's difficult to speak up. I think yeah. we're in a day and age now where, you know, that feeling is it might be difficult, but you do have a voice now yeah. and people will hear it, unlike maybe five, ten years from now. So, or, or again, ten years ago. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, things get cleared up and, you know, for whoever has been accused and has done this, I mean, really, it is, a, it is despicable and, you know, again, uh n- we should respect each other. That's basically one thing. Respect one another. It's a crazy time in our society, so you definitely, again, respect people, their property, and, you know, uh, no means no. And, again, man, let's just get back to talking about wrestling and, and let's talk about all the positives. But on a week like this, you know, you got to talk about it, man, because we can't hide this stuff under the under the cover or push it to the side because it needs to be talked about. It needs to be mentioned, and everyone needs to be at peace. Uh, so... Uh, once again, though, uh, we do not condone it, Trendsetter. But another great episode in the books, Trendsetter, man. Was it four weeks in a row now doing this show? I believe so. Yeah. It and, just uh, flies by, man. It just yeah. flies by. Man, hope you guys enjoy it. Follow us on all our social media. Again, follow us. If you really like us, if you dig the Jersey Wrecking Crew, then just go on our social media at High Spot Podcast. Follow us on Instagram and on Twitter. We appreciate the love. And we'll keep giving you guys great episodes here. The HSP Smackdown Review. So for my tag team partner, the scoundrel, Jeff Moore, and I'm the trend to the Brian Berger. Thank you guys so much for this week. We will catch you next week. Have an amazing Father's Day weekend, guys. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy it. And remember, we do this one reason and one reason only. We do this for you, the crew.
crew. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash those freaking hands. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.